Yeah, so I'm Rana Rowley and I'm the Digital Services Lead for Rochdale Borough Council. And a little bit about me in terms of, um, I'm very customer and out, outcome focused and I've literally worked on every single website the council has run. So I've worked on websites for quite some time. I wouldn't like to think how long, but I remember the internet coming to the council as well. So, but I'm not really that old in terms of kind of <laughs> what you might think. Anyway, um, so basically, um, I've got quite a bit of experience on accessibility, kind of working on websites, but I've not got very much experience when it, work, when it comes to working with Jadu and Jadu products itself, although I work really hard to kind of get Jadu into the council itself. So over the next 20 minutes or so, what I'll do is um, I'll talk to you about um, our new website kind of going live, just give you an overview of it, tell you kind of what worked well, what challenges we face, and what we think we could do better, and at the end there's an opportunity to ask any questions. Okay, so. In terms of our, our, our journey, um, where it all started. So our former website was on SharePoint, and, and, and I'm a very determined person. So give me any, any give me any software, and I'll make I'll do the best I can with it. So even with SharePoint, we still won awards, and even though it's it's inherently inaccessible, we still made it really accessible and, and got one of the most accessible websites kind of in the country uh, with that as well. So because SharePoint was being commissioned, we went out to tender, we then kind of bought kind of Jadu, we, we got a three year contract with that, with the extension of, uh, of uh, extending that for four and five years. I have really high standards within the council, so from an IT perspective, it's like saying, yeah, you externally host it, we'll kind of just do whatever you want to do with it, you know, kind of just build it all into the contract. So that's what, what, what we, we did with that. Um, we, we wanted a website where we wanted really good, exciting opportunities going forward. We've not really had a new website within the council for probably 10 plus years because even though we got a SharePoint website, it was literally a lift and shift. And we really struggled to get developers in to develop that website. So this was a really good opportunity to develop something we really wanted and I wasn't prepared to throw that away. So it was like saying we will invest our time in that. So our website within the council, no different than anyone else's probably, is the busiest access channel and it's really growing. For us, we get six plus, six plus million kind of uh, web views and that was an increase of 10% on the year before. We take seven plus million pounds in online payments and that's kind of been increasing. And we had over 35,000 online forms kind of submitted and last year when we had all that many forms submitted, we had a mixture of different forms packages as well. And uh, we only have a small team and we updated over 7,500 kind of pages just on the corporate website alone with just a few people. So we are a small, but we're a really, really busy team. You won't want to know how many hours we work and how many extra hours we work because it's just madness. So in terms of delivering this particular project, it was really key and we wanted to deliver a really good project. So we built kind of a, um, a team, me in the top left, I kind of led the project from a council perspective. It was really important for me to set the leadership, set the culture, make sure we I really understood all of the teams so that I could kind of assign the relevant work to the relevant skills, keep them all happy, keep them all well, keep them all motivated and to deliver and exceed expectations. And then we've got the, the wonderful Gemma from a... <laughs> Hey, you are Gemma, lovely to see you. Uh, we've got Gemma from um, uh, Jadu as a project manager, and Gemma was fantastic, always happy, always smiley, always helpful, and an absolute credit to Jadu because it was wonderful to have ja uh, to, uh, Gemma as that kind of project manager. And whether we kind of save a buy or whether we kind of keep on developing for the rest of the year, always yet to be seen for that. I had Andrew in my team, and, and, and Andrew was, um, um, he, Andrew did a lot of the um, downloads because we had to get download headers for all of the downloads. He did all of that and lots of the periphery uh, work around there. So it was very methodical in that way. In the bottom left, we have Mark. Mark came partway through the project where we had already done the lift and shift. And what Mark did was do the redirects and manage the content on both sides until we kind of went live. Then we've got Julia, the wonderful Julia, who's kind of in the room at the back. And Julie was a really key asset because Julie had knowledge of Jadu before we started, which was an absolute bonus to us delivering this kind of project. So we made fewer mistakes because we could build on that knowledge and we could kind of relieve the pressure on, on Gemma as well because we could, you know, there were fewer questions going to Gemma. And what 
what Julie also did was absolutely key to the project was um, she created um, a big information architecture of the whole of the website showing what were like single page documents, what we were using for multi-page documents, what categories they all fell under. So basically you could get anyone in and say build the website based upon this documentation and that was absolutely crucial. And then we've got Kay um, in the bottom right and Kay is... Um, has a really good eye for detail. So what I, what I did with Kay was I got Kay to really understand the contract, understand every line in the contract so we knew as a council what we were expecting Jadu to deliver and we could hold them accountable for everything within the contract. So she kind of got her head around the contract and I knew the contract because I had written it over however long it was, but I needed somebody within the team to also understand that. And she did all of the testing. In addition to that, what we had was... Um, the odd person, we had one person from finance who helped with all of the invoices for Jadu and, and do, all, do all the money side of it. Then I had one person on and off from a, a contractual perspective, if we had any contractual issues, we had that person, and then one person from an IT to, to help with the, the IT and the integration and go live for that. So that was our, our team. But what we did with our team is... Um, I didn't want all and sundry coming to the, the project team. We hand selected who could come to the teams and at what stage they could, they, they could come to the team. What we didn't want is for a, a website to be influenced by people who really didn't, didn't understand digital, but there were more people that didn't understand digital around the table than did understand digital and therefore they influenced decisions for a project that we really didn't want to deliver. So, you know, we had a number of people that sort of said, oh, can I come to the project meetings? Can I come to the project meetings? It's like... What value do you add to this particular project? If you wanted to, you know, kind of create, you know, have something on the website, well, that was at specification stage. And at this stage, we've got a specification, we're going to deliver to scope, and we're not going to have any scope creep. So we were really, really focused on what we were delivering. In terms of our ambitions, we just align these just to the kind of uh, the council's values. And in terms of pioneering, we wanted to set a really new direction for council websites. I felt as if over the years we've very much kind of focused on uh, pull content and I think Jerry McGovern has kind of pushed councils towards, you know, kind of focus on pull content, what customers are, are coming to pull from your website, all about top tasks. But given COVID as well, I thought, well, you know what, people really don't know what's going on in the borough. When people got locked down in the borough, they went to the same leisure places all the time and we got packed with car parks, they didn't really understand what was on the doorstep. So we really wanted to do both pull and push on this website and, and take it down a, a different direction and give it a go and see what happened, but still use data to see how it would work and modify it accordingly. We also wanted to have flexibility and build a website for today and tomorrow. My team is not a technical team, and what I didn't want to do was constantly go running to IT and say, well, I need some more money because I need to do this and I need to do that, whatever. So it's like, how do we create that flexibility to create that website for today and tomorrow, and how do we build that into the design? We also um, set a target to be in the top 10 of most accessible council websites in the country. We knew working with Jadu and Jadu's history that they can really focus on accessibility and they're passionate about accessibility. Well, I too am passionate about accessibility. So I'm thinking, well, do you know what? We'll set a target because our senior leadership team will think, yeah, top 10 is quite good. But in reality, we want to go for number one. We, you know, why, why sit to top 10 when you know somebody has to be at number one at some stage? Uh, so that's what we're looking at. We're also looking to achieve the internet crystal mark on, on the website. In terms of passionate, we re, what, we did, don't want, what we didn't want to do was just shut down access channels. It's like saying we really want to deliver a, 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 a really excellent uh, customer journey on the website so people will choose to use the website. That customer journey was really important for us. So there were some of the things. Um, with, with regards to selling this... What we, needed to what we needed to get people to understand is this project is not just a lift and shift. Because most people around the council thought, well, you're moving a website, all you've got to do is copy and paste the content and put it on another website. What, why do you need resources? What do you need to do? They really, really didn't understand it. So it was about how do we engage with people and how do we get people to understand this is actually at the time probably the largest project within the customer transformation project because we have 
We haven't procured a new, C a, a new CRM, a new my account, et cetera, et cetera. We haven't procured a lot of them. So this was one of those. So it was about how do we start to pull together some of these connectors to get people to understand this project is bigger than you think. So I won't go through all of these because we'll have limited time. Um, in terms of also selling this to a um, leadership team, it's like how can we get them to understand the basics of what this kind of project is. So here are some of the things that we were looking at in terms of, you know, make it really good, you know, kind of, we wanted to, um, we've got lots of smaller websites and it was about saying how can we shut some of those websites down and keep, keep everything on one big website and have a family of, of websites and even though we've got like partners how can we kind of sort of say to people that it will be really cheap low cost to deliver kind of galaxy sites over jadu rather than have really expensive sites we still wanted to make uh, savings because we had kind of the, re the relevant people in the room. So we had to kind of talk about savings and how we can kind of make savings, how we can kind of reduce avoidable contact, how we can kind of uh, create synergy between all of the different websites, etc. And we, what we really want to do as well is to reduce the reputation and uh, uh, enhance the reputation of the borough as that great place uh, to live, spend, leisure time and do business. We need to generate the borough as well and, and improve that reputation. So in delivering this project, um, what really, really was important was communications and engaging with people because everything on the website touched literally every service across, across the council. And I wanted a website, I wanted a project that not only a website that worked really well, but I wanted the reputation of us living in a really excellent um, uh, project that actually delivered and we had outcomes as a result of it. So it, so it was about how do we communicate? I started a blog and we had a, a monthly blog on the internet and it turned out that I think by the end of it we had about 2,000 views to, to that blog which might not sound a lot but it was probably by far the most popular article that's probably ever been on the internet but it was you know Every week, you, I looked at the stats for an internet and it might have had 36 views or 60 odd views or whatever. So we had a lot of engagement through the website, through the internet there, sorry. And it was really important because I could communicate really clearly everything I wanted to do, I could communicate. And when you're working on the project, it's really easy. It took me like 20 minutes, 30 minutes to write a blog. Everything's in my head, just type it away, it's done. Next, fire it off just remembering to do it kind of every month, but making sure that people knew what they had to do to make this project successful. So it wasn't all about me delivering the project, it was about how did they contribute to making sure that everything within their service area is ready for our go live date as well. We did other things in terms of we had a, a, an internet newsletter uh, service, so we we, complete, we used to do that on a uh, on a regular basis as well. We used to put messages in emails at the, in, in the email footer to remind people of their uh, their tasks in terms of pre go live tasks and post go live tests. We built a user testing group. Um, it was really hard because we were delivering this through COVID. Everybody was on lockdown. Nobody really understood the technology. It's like, how do you use a test when you're delivering this project? But what we did was we got lots of web authors. We got a few external people just to use a test, the information architecture, the navigation, understand kind of get, get some feedback from kind of customers, presented to the leadership team, why the leadership team. We, we, we selected key stakeholders, you know, those people that were thinking, actually, we need to engage with you people because if we don't engage with you people, it won't be successful. So we need to get you on board. So we hand selected certain people. They didn't come to meetings, but we just hand selected certain people just to engage with them so that they could, they could understand where the project was up to, ask any questions. And we always had an open door policy, whether that was on the internet, whether that was verbally, we kept that open door policy and that was massively successful. Just a few fun facts. I mean, um, this is kind of what we went live with. On the SharePoint site, we had about 12 to 1400 web pages. But with Jadu, um, we have to get, have a, an individual page for every download. Um, we had what we class as like multi page templates where you've got your previous and next. And the way Sitemost counts them are individual pages. So according to Sitemost on Go Live, we had 4,750 pages. 
So far more than what I was expecting at the beginning of this project. But, you know, getting people to understand a few fun facts was important because it could start to think, wow, you have actually been dealing with a lot of information. You've just done it on your own instead of kind of asking us to do a lot of work. So that all helped with the communications as well. So we, we did want to look at innovation as well. And um, we created what Ed, Ed from Jadu, coined the phrase featurettes. So the, we looked at all the widgets that Jadu had on, on offer and couldn't find anything that was kind of wanted, that we wanted to use to deliver, to give us a flexibility of delivering what we wanted to do at low cost, kind of from a longer term perspective and having that flexibility. So I, I kind of, I was in the one night, three o'clock in the morning, it was like I was designing the homepage and it was all of these boxes and then Ed came up with these, these featurettes. And basically what we've got is, um, if we look at like a block and that's a featurette widget and then we look at the individual articles, they're the featurette articles, we have the flexibility of toggling things off and toggling things on. So um, we've got the images, then we've got a heading, or we can have a heading and some free text where we put a date in for news stories or a timing for events. So we can have the flexibility at the bottom row where we, we can put a description. So on landing pages, on the home page, we can create as many of these rows as we want. And we've got that flexibility to change it. So sometimes we'll use these for news, sometimes we'll use these for events, sometimes we'll use these for tasks. We can pick and choose what we use these for. So this has been really good for us in terms of delivering something different across across our site. Also behind each of the featurettes we've got branding and what we wanted to do was change the feel of the website every season without any additional cost. So we've got um, a suite of colours for every season. So all we've got to do is go, go into the featurettes, change the colour that sits behind it every season and change the, the feel of the website with no additional cost. We are working with Jadu to develop um, the featurette, so they're automated and they can, automate, they can automatically expire and we can put them on whichever pages we want, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, that's a real positive development that we're hoping to kind of, uh, uh, I, I think it's going to be de developed, Gemma, anytime. I think we just put the order in everywhere, so it can be, I don't know what, what, what the end date is, but it's hopefully sometimes kind of soon. So we've got the flexibility in terms of we can have three featurettes, we can have a double featurette or a single featurette, and it's been really good for us. So not only did we think about these featurettes for um, desktops, we also thought about how will this stack on a mobile design. So we changed the stacking mechanism on the mobile design. So if you've got two, then they go uh, uh, horizontal. And if you've got three featurettes, then they go kind of horizontal, just so that it kind of breaks up the page when you're on a, on a mobile device as opposed to a desktop. So we didn't just want to focus on desktops and desktops alone. In terms of what went well, um, we just had kind of a, a couple of meetings in terms of looked at, uh, got feedback from all, the, all, all of our stakeholders and here are a few things in terms of what we got uh, feedback on. Uh, project management, uh, a methodical approach, you know, and, and I think we did, I, I agree in terms of it was very methodical, we were kind of on time and uh, pro, uh, we also had a really thorough understanding of our spec to be able to deliver uh, the project. In terms of stakeholder management, we did have clear communications. And one of the things that really helped us is we didn't announce the go live date until five weeks before we went live. No matter who asked, there was always a reason why we wouldn't deliver it. So at no stage did we ever fail or ever change any dates because we, we refused to kind of give out kind of a, a go live date. Well, not refuse is the wrong word to use. Um, there was always justification for not giving out a go live date, so we never disappointed anybody. In terms of design and build, you know, the accessibility was wonderful in terms of we, we set the target of saying within Sightmost, there were, I think, five different service areas. We wanted 10 out of 10 for every single service area within there, and that's what we were aiming for, and that's kind of what we achieved from a 125-page uh, result. Um, uh, from an implementation perspective, our communication was really, really strong and our existing knowledge of Jadu was really good. From a resource perspective, we had really good, committed, dedicated and passionate staff. I can't, you know, in terms of, yes, we set the culture, yes, we, they were clear on the aims and the objectives, but 
you know, our staff absolutely did deliver what we needed to deliver. And we understood what made each member of the team tick. We got a huge layer positive feedback from our, our staff. When we went out and asked our staff in terms of feedback, what do you think? Here's just a, a, a sample of some of the some of the feedback that we got. But this we got way more than that, but couldn't fit it on. And one of our uh, aims was to get our uh, the internet crystal mark. Um, three weeks after we went live, we got our internet crystal mark. So that was uh, something that we'd achieved. In terms of challenges, delivering this project during a pandemic, when the pandemic was priority of the project was really difficult because we had no extra resources during the pandemic, but we had to deliver the pan pandemic as a priority and this is secondary on top of all of the business as usual work. So it was, there were very long hours that we had to work. Accessing stakeholders during the pandemic was in itself a, a, a challenge. Um, in terms of design and build, um, I think working with Jadu to make sure that Jadu understood um, our specification in terms of understood our vision initially. You know, there was extra work that we needed to do to get to, 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 to that uh, particular stage. Um, achieving 10 out of 10 for SAT, SAT uh, performance as measured by SiteMOS, even though we uh, achieved 10 out of 10 for every service area in SiteMOS, that was on a 125 page report. On a full report across the whole site, we achieved 10 out of 10 for every service area apart from performance. And we're still looking at why that is the case. Is it purely because it's just such a large site that it's not performing as well? We're not quite sure on that. But then that could be kind of site more so in as much detail in terms of for us to understand what then problems are. User testing during a pan pandemic was uh, was quite challenging, and um, recruiting additional staff and recruiting additional skilled staff. You know, kind of we had a couple of staff came in, went. You know, kind of we were only we were only interested in having people who were determined to deliver for us. So sometimes having no additional staff was better than having completely unskilled staff within the team. In terms of what we do differently. Well, I took them as quotes because nobody told me what to do for that section, so I just took them in all up there. Um, uh, stakeholder management, we've kind of covered some of that. Um, design and build, I, you know, what we looked at there was, we had a meeting with Jadu and Jadu came up with the first design. That didn't hit the mark for us because we were, in my head, I had a vision of what we wanted from a website perspective, which was push and pull, and that, first meeting and that first design was very much focused on top tasks and customers pulling the information but all of the push agenda that we wanted to deliver on wasn't there so that's what we kind of needed to kind of do further work on. In terms of implementation we didn't actually, some of the team didn't actually bring in clean code so we had a few hiccups there in terms of going back and tidying some of the code up. Um, Doing something different, our cookie platform was really hard work because we had to identify all the, all the uh, cookies ourselves instead of it being automated. And resource management, if we do anything different, I'd probably go external, use some different agencies to um, recruit staff. But I knew that at the time. I just did not have the time to kind of go live. I'm just a bit conscious of time. Um, so in terms of, if, you never, if you're not seeing our new website, I, I, I sort of say, please do have a look at our website at rochelle.gov.uk. You can email me personally in terms of any feedback on there. I'd welcome all feedback. I'm not really bothered if it's, if it's uh, any uh, constructive feedback, any criticism, I prefer to have a really good website than for you to sort of say, oh, that's pretty rubbish, there is, you know, tell me, and, and, and I'm happy to improve that. Uh, and where we can make improvements, I do, because we've got kind of feedback on lots of pages of the website, and I welcome all the feedback that we get from residents to help me improve it. So we've got a, li a really short video to watch, just to give you a bit of a flavour of the website. On the 18th of May 2022, our new website went live. It's now more secure, with all pages delivered across HTTPS, improving customer confidence and search engine optimization. It's more responsive on mobile devices. Over 60% of visitors use mobiles to access our content. We have a new site search engine, and more flexibility to refine search results and get customers to the right content faster. We have a more intuitive navigation and user journey to help customers navigate the website as they want to. Integrated forms using new branded website templates help with the customer journey. 
Flexible page layouts to help customers scan the content and complete their task quicker. Additional features help us to better promote our services. More flexibility to reduce avoidable contact and make further savings. Encouraging investment, customer and outcome focused, enhancing our reputation. www.rochdale.gov.uk Perfect. So just to summarise there, you know, in terms of if you, just a few takeaways, if I was to do this kind of project again, I would sort of say the importance of having a clear spec and a thorough understanding of it is really key. Having that, that team and that strong, passionate team to deliver is, is, is important. Communicating with with all of your stakeholders, all of your, all of your staff, and communicating frequently absolutely helped us. And for me, I only ever think success is the only option. I never think, no matter what you do, you can make a success of it if you want to. So that's it from my perspective. Thank you so much.